The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Seize Your Business podcast. My name is Brian McDonald from On Purpose Growth, and uh, today we have uh, Jim Drollshagen on, and what we're going to be talking about is how a sharing economy can benefit your commercial business. Uh, so Jim, I appreciate uh, you coming on, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and, uh, and your company. Well, I come from an outsourcing background. My uh, prior company that I sold, uh, we had a, a, a 80-person uh, outsourcing center in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. Uh, and that's where I really pretty much learned uh, about outsourcing. Uh, when I sold the company, I decided rather than, than stick with, with straight outsourcing, I was going to uh, uh, go into uh, what, what I'm talking about today, which is, is taking advantage of what the sharing economy means and how it helps commercial businesses. My current business, J.D. Hagen, is involved in uh, uh, outsourced sales directors. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about, um, so there's no confusion, the difference between the sharing economy and outsourcing because as we were talking, they're, they're not the same thing. Right. Uh, outsourcing uh, uh, company. Uh, Many, many companies use outsourcing. It's, yep. it's used extensively. It's, it's mostly used for staffing positions for uh, things like customer service or, or te- uh, telesales, things like that, where you need a whole bunch of people. And it's, it's, uh, it makes the economies of scale better mm-hmm. for an outsourcing company to do it. They can hire hundreds of people and, and you can, you can uh, uh, basically rent your people for cheaper mm-hmm. by sending it through an outsourced company. Uh, but it's usually historically only been used, again, for, for uh, level jobs that are, that are staff level. Uh, hasn't been uh, a lot of, of, of use in the in the uh, uh, executive boardrooms and so forth, and that's okay. changing. Um, what what we're finding is that the sharing economy is becoming part of the larger economy now. Mm-hmm. And by sharing economy, I'm talking about things like uh, Uber or, or uh, Airbnb. Oh yeah, okay. Where a person has uh, an asset. So let's say you have your car. Uh, well, you're not using your car. Uh, for your own personal use 24 hours a day. You're mm-hmm. not even using it 12 hours a day. Most people only really drive about an hour a day. That's a very expensive asset to, to have sitting in your garage, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, paying for the, for the insurance and oh, for, yeah. the, for the, for the uh, depreciation and so forth. So uh, what Uber is taking advantage of is the fact that these people have these assets and they'd like to, to, to spread the cost of, of that asset among other people. So they, they developed this system for sharing rides. Uh, and it's been very successful, and and people that that uh, that are drivers for for Uber are finding that it, that it's a, a a very good way for them to to take that asset, divvy up the cost among all the riders, and 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 uh, are able to afford that car more more on a on a more level basis. More basis yeah. Uh, the same thing with Airbnb. Uh, many many people have second homes. They have cottages, things like that. Uh, many people buy homes for in, investment purposes, and uh, Airbnb did the same thing. They, they, they put a technology platform together that would allow people to, to take that asset and share it with other people so that the entire cost of the asset isn't on, on their own shoulders. And again, that's been hugely successful. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Airbnb actually makes a lot of money. Uber, oh, yeah. Uber hasn't really made much money yet. Um, but, well, it's because the, the, uh, their, their, their business model isn't, isn't quite as, as, uh, as tight as Airbnb. Exactly. Um, so what, what we're talking about today is, is, is how that sharing economy can affect commercial businesses and where, where businesses are really starting to, to move into that area. And, uh, you know, the, most businesses don't own their, their, their uh, facilities. They don't own their offices. They lease uh, right, and things right. like that. Um, and there are, there are uh, some, some capabilities of, of sharing some of the space. But the assets that I'm talking about today, the assets that, that are, are, are starting to be shared more and more uh, frequently in the business community, particularly among uh, small to mid-sized businesses, okay. is human resource assets. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I had a business. I, I, I just told you I had uh, 80-some employees. Yeah, right. Um, that's a mid-sized business, and, and, and you're sort of stuck in the middle in a, in a lot of ways. Um, uh, think things like a CFO. Uh, I could have, afford, I, I could have, lo- I would have loved to have a CFO. All right. But they're very expensive. I mean, a CFO is a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar investment. Uh, so, so how did you get that resource? So what you end up doing is you end up not having one, and you have to do it all yourself, and, oh. or you use your accountant and you use your bookkeepers, and you're all trying to to do the things that a CFO would do. And and quite frankly, uh, it's 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 not very good. I'm not good at it <laughs> uh, I was never trained for it and uh, All right. <laughs> so uh, you know you run into a lot of, of issues that you probably wouldn't have run into had you had a proper person in the job 
Um, I mean, you were you were getting things done, but it just didn't sound like things were as efficient. Right, they're not as efficient, and and you're not doing them as frequently as as you should. You're not yeah. paying attention. Things kind of get away from you, and and then you've got a big rush. Uh, you you know you can't you can't wear every hat in the business at the same time. Right. Uh, but a but a small business guy uh, with you know employees from anywhere from five up to a, let's say a, less than a hundred people. Yep. Uh, they have to wear all those hats, and uh, if they don't want to wear them, then they have to spend a, a, a ton of money. Uh, the same thing uh, with with sales directors, companies that only have five, six, seven uh, salespeople, even up to maybe ten. Uh, again, they're they're faced with the same issue. Do do the salespeople need daily management? Yeah, mm-hmm. but are you going to hire a, a sales director that's going to come in uh, for one hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars to to run that sales staff for you? Um, or are you going to spend a lot less than that and get somebody that really, you, right. you're wasting, I mean, rather than spending 150000 you're spending seventy and wasting every dime of it. Yeah, kind of like a Band-Aid or right, something exactly. that should be surgery exactly. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I right? mean, you, you want somebody that's going to do the job and, and, and be effective. You want the best you can get, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and yet you don't want to pay for it because it's too expensive. So what, what's happening now is, is you're finding companies that are starting to share these resources. Uh, it started uh, actually. It started with CEOs. Um, really, not, companies are starting to share CEOs. That's interesting. Uh, uh, because the, the the job of the CEO is kind is is, is really very specific. Mm-hmm. If he's not wearing every hat in the house, yeah, <laughs> uh, true. Uh, and so they're they're sharing those. CFOs has has been a very big big yeah. thing. This this is in the, in the past three or four years. There's if you if you go into Google now, there's hundreds of them. I yep. mean, this just I've started across the line yeah, just a few years yeah. ago, and now there's hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, part-time CEOs or CFOs, uh, and a company can can use them, and and you can choose how much you need. So they'll come in and they'll do an assessment, and they'll say, all right, I, I can I can take care of all this, say in one day a, a week, or a half a day a week, or two days a month, uh, whatever it might be, and then uh, you're only paying for the, the the use of that person while you're using mm-hmm. them, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you're getting all that work done that you that you would have been on your plate. You're getting it done by somebody that's more professional, mm-hmm. and you're you're uh, uh, making sure that everything is being done on time and and in the in the proper way. And it takes a headache away from you that you don't have to think about it. Because one of the things w- in business, when 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 uh, when small business uh, owners, uh, an awful lot of the time they spend in their work is thinking about their work, oh, thinking yeah. about yeah, all yeah. the things and planning, trying to you know figure out what am I not doing, what am I not mm-hmm. getting to. Uh, and the answer to that almost always is a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> so like you can <laughs> you can you can either either just c- continue to keep doing it that way, or look into these new these new uh, methods of of, of tre- streamlining your job, and professionalizing the management of those various pieces of your business, which you're not doing right now. Right. Um, I came from a sales uh, a sales background myself, so when I started my company, uh, I did all the sales. But when I had to start hiring salespeople. Um, I know how to sales train. I, I, I trained salespeople for Dun & Bradstreet uh, okay. back, back in early in my career. Oh, wow. Uh, so I have a lot of, 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 of experience in training people. But the question is, if you're not doing it all the time, are you really doing it any of the time? Right. Because if, if, you're, if you're not doing it all the time, what you're doing is you're just reacting. And with salespeople, especially, when, when, when all you're doing is reacting, it's, you're, 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 you're trying to clean up a mess that's already been made. Yep. Uh, uh, sales is a, is is a part of your business that needs constant constant supervision, or at least a plan in place that that is constantly being monitored, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that can easily be done again by a, an outsourced sales director. Uh, it doesn't have to be there every day, but but they have to be there on a regular schedule mm-hmm. where they're doing the training, they're doing the coaching, and and especially what they're doing. The most important thing about any of these things is just setting up procedures. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. And in 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 any of these outsourcing. Uh, uh, Jobs, um, or any of these, you know, part-time, whether it's a CFO or a sales director or a CEO, it's setting up procedures, and 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 once those procedures are in place, then all you have to do is monitor the the performance on those procedures. And uh, in sales, what what I'm doing uh, is it's it's uh, setting up the, the the daily sales procedures, proven repeatable procedures that can be used over and over, and the monitoring of those procedures is is not that difficult. Uh, then the job once you once you've set those in place and and you've, you've got the, the the people in the in the uh, in the in the company that are uh, cooperating and taking part mm-hmm. 
and uh, and and doing their uh, the, fulfilling their responsibilities in, within those procedures, then then it's all up to coaching and training. Yep. Um, and and that's a big part of it. And that's the part of it that that so many of the business owners they miss. Um, the coaching is you're not doing the job. I have to fire you. I yeah. mean, that's the amount of coaching, generally speaking, that people are getting. Um, why do you think they're missing it? Why, why, why do you think uh, why do you think that's being missed? I should say. Well, because you you, you, you develop a level of trust, uh, and it's it, in many cases it's misplaced trust. I've I've, mm. I've I've been in sales as I said my whole life, uh, and I've I've had many 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 salespeople, and uh, salespeople are are a, a specific kind of personality, mm-hmm. and they're not the type of personality, generally speaking, that likes to have procedures. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they, they, they went into sales because they're gregarious and, they're, yeah, and, and yeah, they, exactly. they, they, they like to talk and they like to do things. They don't, they don't like to, to follow the procedures. Right. And consequently, uh, business owners, they'll hire people and they become close to them because it's a small business and you're work, all working yeah. together. Mm-hmm. You get to know the families and everything. Well, it's... It gets a little bit tough to, to run those procedures and 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 be very steadfast and mm-hmm. saying this is what's going to be done each day. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a, 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 a an outsider, a, 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 an outsourced sales director can come in and do all those things. He's not their buddy. Yeah. He's not he's not yeah. barbecuing with their wife on the weekends. Yeah. Uh, so he can he can uh, institute those policies and take a lot of the pressure off the the uh, CEO with respect to. You've got six people here. You know, at least one of them isn't doing the job, right? And uh, it's hard for the, the 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 guy that hired all those people and knows them and, and has developed varying relationships with them. It's hard for him to, to, to manage that part of the job. Whereas, again, an outsourced uh, director can come in and say, "No, this is this is this is what you're going to do. Uh, this person here is not getting the job done. We're going to have to we're going to have to let him right. go. We're going to have to." Uh, we're going to set into into, into place uh, hiring procedures that are going to have the same type of, of strict strict uh, adherence to policies that that we have with the day to day sales operations. So we're going to bring in the right people, um, and you know once once the the one thing salespeople will do once you've really once you've really got them going and you've shown them that they can be successful, yeah. then then they like it. Then they'll then they'll do it. Oh yeah, uh, right. I mean that—that's the thing. They'll—they'll they'll, they'll fight and they'll fight and they'll fight, just like a dog being trained. But eventually, the routine becomes part of the, of of their day. Yep. And then, God forbid, somebody come in and try to change, change it. Change it, yeah. Because right. then, then it's then right. It's, well, yeah. what's working for them is the old stuff, which is ultimately no structure. Right. Which does something for them, but not as much as it should be doing for the business. Yep. Right. Yeah. Two different systems. Exactly. And and I, I you know I've been focusing here for the last few minutes on the on the on the sales side, but the same goes with on the on the on the whether it's a CFO, a CEO, and any of these other uh, assets. In my company, I completely outsourced our HR function. Oh really? Uh, yeah, and that that was a, a, a decision that I made because I didn't know the first thing about about uh, uh, drawing up uh, uh, like employee manuals and things, and things like, like yeah, that. Those yeah. are yeah, those are those are very tough to make because the, you have to adhere to, to, to strictly to the law, mm-hmm. um, and you have to have in place policies that you can follow because, you know, when you're in business, you get sued. It's mm-hmm. it's going to happen. Right. So as long as you've adhered to the policies that, that, that you've you've established, then you don't have a problem. Um, and doing all those things is very important. So we we outsource that completely, um, and it cost me about a tenth what it would have cost me to hire a full time wow. person. Uh, and you so got the structure got everything. that you needed, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. everything, including if I had to fire somebody, they did it. Okay, there you I, go. I, yeah, I didn't even have to give the talk. <laughs> so, uh, Which probably it, made it just overall easier on you. Well, right? yeah, easier on me. I mean, not, not, not even so much that, that it was an emotional burden, but, but you're so concerned about the things that you have to say. Yes. That, you know, they, that, to them, that's rote. So they, right. they, they know uh, exactly what to say and how to do it, and off the person goes. And, and uh, it just makes it all easier. So all these things, again, uh, uh, some of it's not as new, some of it's very new. The 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 outsourcing of the of the CFO, as I said, that's been going on uh, uh, for quite a while, but it really didn't take off until this last couple of years. The sales director thing is just beginning, really. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it's something that that uh, I'm involved in, and the and the the people that I'm involved with around the country, we probably have maybe, I would guess, 200 people doing this. Oh wow! Around okay. the country and. Uh, uh, it's it's something that's starting to, to really uh, uh, get some traction. I, I can foresee a time when when there there won't be companies that have fewer than ten employees that that, that hire their own sales directors anymore because it just doesn't make really? sense. Uh, I mean, I, I'll give you an example. When I was at yeah. Dun & Bradstreet, um, I had probably 
well, I'm going to say 50 or 60 salespeople okay. uh, uh, across the country. Um, and it really is not that big of a, of a, of a job to mm -hmm. manage that many people. You can do it. Uh, again, if you have the, 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 the policies in place. Yeah. Um, so, so if you only have seven, really what... That's a part-time job already. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, I mean, so so why pay full-time? It really is only a part-time mm -hmm. job. Managing seven people is, I mean, literally, if I was to talk to a customer and they had seven people, I would start off saying that they would need me one day a week. After, after six months, I would say they only need me a half a day a week. Really? For, for, once, for, so once for you seven get it, people. Once you start really using the sharing economy and get the structure and everything in place, the use of that actually goes down only Absolutely. because you get more effective. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not. They're just not going to need me as often once the people are trained and I've and I've done a little bit of the staff turnover that they're going to require and they have, you know, everybody. Everybody's performing at the levels that they're expected to perform. Mm -hmm. Then you know that you just don't have to be there every every minute. Uh, you know, the the coaching and the training that that's that's a, an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. But I can do that once a week. Right. Uh, so, the, so the, these are the things that are that are changing. I think the way business is is being done, and as younger people are coming into into positions of authority in businesses, and they're starting a lot of, you know, a lot of the entrepreneurs that around the country, oh, yeah. the startups are, are are millennials, young people. Uh, they're all they're used to all this. They, you know, they 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 love the idea of of, of having a nearly virtual company mm -hmm. uh, with 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 not nearly as many employees. You know, when I started twenty years ago. Um, you know, I, I hired all these people, and and uh, you know, if I had if I was starting again today to do this, I would probably have have really, really, really uh, uh, thought about each individual hire and, and what I've needed to have that person in the, in that job, or should I, or could I split that up with somebody else? Oh, so that's but, your that's your natural um, train of thinking is yeah. Is this something I need to bring on, or is this something I need to use a sharing economy? Right, with? like my my for example, my my uh, uh, management management of my outsource center. Uh, I, I could probably easily have 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 split those jobs. Wow. Um, uh, because the, you know, again, once once the policies and everything are in place, the the necessity of having somebody there twenty four or not twenty four seven, but uh, five full days time. a week yeah, full, full time, time. Uh, uh, it gets less and less. Hmm. Um, and I was out there usually every week. So, so, uh, I mean, if I was going to be out there anyway, what, what, I, I, you know, again, in retrospect, these, yeah, these right. decisions all seem, seem exactly right. right. Seem very simple. But uh, yeah, I just think I just think this is a coming thing, and I think it's something that uh, that uh, business people, and whether they're whether they're young or they're middle aged and, and running businesses, whether they've only been in business for five years or very often, what I see are businesses that have been around for ten or twenty years. They need help. And uh, they're, they're still they're still operating under the, the old paradigms, and oh, I think yeah. I think really uh, uh, waking up and, and saying th this is the way that the, the world is going. Maybe I should look into this and, and, and start considering how I could do this because right. you can make a lot more money. Right. Well, and you obviously speak from experience, not from this is not just a. Uh, um, an idea that you have. No, this, I'm not an academic. You're a, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us are, right? Yeah. A, but so, which is which is very powerful because um, it, it, this is even as you uh, as you were reflecting back on uh, on your business and having those 80 people. I mean, I could see you thinking through how this actually applies and how I should have could have been able to do this. I mean. Um, uh, it may not have been available at the time, mm -hmm. but it's definitely applicable to um, it sure the way is. you structured this. It sure so. is, and and and, uh, and you know it doesn't. It really doesn't matter if your business is, is entrenched and, and you've been around for a long time. Right. It doesn't matter. You can always change. I mean, you're using computers now. Exactly. <laughs> you, right. know, you, you didn't. You know, 25 years ago when you started, there was no such thing as a PC that exactly. was running your business. So if you, if you can adapt technologically, you can also adapt in terms of the philosophy of running your business. And uh, there, there are ways. There are a lot of ways under the sun to make more money, and this, I think, is one of them. Yeah. Well, Jim, I appreciate uh, you coming on, and uh, everybody. If you want to learn more about uh, Jim and uh, JD Hagen, uh, all of his information will be uh, shared here. Please reach out to him. He's obviously an expert in um, in what he does and an experienced business person. Uh, and thanks for joining us on this uh, episode of Seize Your Business Podcast. Take thanks. Care, thanks very much. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All Thank right, you, man. Yeah, that's that was great. great. Do you have too much stuff? Is your dorm, apartment, or house too full and you don't want to sell, give away, or throw out anything? If so, Hobson Storage can help. 
We have over 10 different sized units to meet your needs. Our climate control units are safe, secure, and conveniently located within the western suburbs. Call us now at 630-964-4047 to find out how you can get 15% off an upper level unit, two months of free rent, or use of our van to help you move in. Call us and use promo code A1V, as in Victor, to take back control of your space with Hobson Storage. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.